Greetings to God's people as we gather together at the beginning of yet another Lent, as we launch that Lent with the Ash Wednesday Memorial Service. We thank you for being with us. Let's open with a word of prayer. Dear Jesus, in the passing of the days, we have each again fallen short of the glory and blessings you intended our lives to be. Forgive us and help us to return our focus to the cross and to turn our ways back to your ways that we might bring honor and blessings to your holy name. Amen. The people of God gather on Ash Wednesday to mark the beginnings of Lent's baptismal preparation for Easter. On this day, the people of God receive an ashen cross on their forehead traditionally, a gesture which is rooted in baptism and will be adapted this year due to social distancing. We also come together to hear the solemn proclamation to keep a fast in preparation for Easter's feast and to contemplate anew the ongoing meaning of baptismal initiation into Jesus' death and resurrection. While marked with the cross, the church hears God's promise of forgiveness and tastes God's mercy in the bread of life and the cup of salvation. From this solemn service, the church goes forth on its journey to the great baptismal feast of Easter. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear people of God, the first followers of Jesus observed with great devotion the days of Jesus' passion and resurrection, and it became the custom of the church to prepare for them by a season of penitence and fasting. This season of Lent provided a time in which converts to the faith were prepared for holy baptism. It also was a time when those who had been separated from the body of the faithful were reconciled by penitence and forgiveness and restored to the fellowship of the church. Thereby the whole congregation was put in mind of the message of pardon and absolution set forth in the gospel of our Savior and of the need of which all followers of Jesus continually have to renew our repentance and faith. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, even in this very different of years, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's word, and to make a right beginning of repentance, and as a mark of our mortal nature, let us now confess our sins before God, our Maker, and our Redeemer. Have pity on us, O God, in keeping with your mercy, in keeping with your unlimited compassion, wipe out our rebellious acts, wash us thoroughly from our guilt, and cleanse us from our sin. We admit that we are rebellious. Our sin is always in front of us. We have sinned against you. We have done what you consider evil. So you hand down justice when you speak, and you are blameless when you judge. Indeed, we were born guilty. We were sinners when our mothers conceived us. Yet you desire truth and sincerity. Deep down inside, you teach us wisdom. Purify us from sin with hyssop, and we will be clean. Wash us, and we will be whiter than snow. Let us hear sounds of joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have broken dance. Hide your face from our sins, and wipe out all that we have done wrong. Create a clean heart within us, O God, and renew a faithful spirit within us. Do not force us away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from us. Restore the joy of your salvation to us, and provide us with a spirit of willing obedience. Then we will teach your ways to those who are rebellious, and sinners will return to you. Rescue us from our guilt, O God, our Savior, 
Let our tongues sing joyfully about your righteousness. O God, open our lips, and our mouths will show forth your praise. You are not happy with sacrifice, otherwise we would offer one to you. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifice pleasing to you is a broken spirit, and you do not despise a broken and sorrowful heart. We confess our sins to God and to one another. Most holy and merciful God, we have sinned by our own fault in thought, word, and deed. We have sinned by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart and mind and strength. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We have not forgiven others as we have been forgiven. Have mercy on us, O God. Have mercy on us, O God. We have been deaf to your call to serve as Jesus served us. We have not been true to the mind of Jesus. We have grieved your Holy Spirit. Have mercy on us, O God. Have mercy on us, O God. We confess to you all our past unfaithfulness, the pride, hypocrisy, and impatience of our lives. We confess to you, O God. We confess to you, O God. Our self-indulgent appetites and ways and our exploitation of others, we confess to you, O God. We confess to you, O God. Our anger at our own weakness and our envy of those more fortunate, we confess to you, O God. We confess to you, O God our intemperate love of worldly goods and comforts, and our dishonesty in daily work and life, we confess to you, O God, we confess to you, O God. Our negligence in prayer and worship, and our failure to share with others the faith that is in us, we confess to you, O God, we confess to you, O God. Accept our repentance for the wrongs we have done, for our blindness to human need and suffering, and our indifference to injustice and cruelty. Accept our repentance, O God. Accept our repentance, O God. For all false judgments, uncharitable thoughts, prejudice, and contempt toward our neighbors who differ from us, Accept our repentance, O God. Accept our repentance, O God. For our waste and pollution of your creation and our lack of concern for those who come after us, accept our repentance, O God. Accept our repentance, O God. Restore us, O God, and let your anger depart from us. Hear us, O God, for your mercy is great. Amen. I invite you at this time to make upon your own brow the sign of the cross while saying, remember that thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return. Remember that thou art dust, and to dust thou shalt return. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father of our Savior Jesus Christ, who desires not the death of sinners, but rather that they may turn from their wickedness and live, has given power and commandment to the church to declare and pronounce to all people, being penitent, the absolution and remission of their sins. God pardons and absolves all those who truly repent and with sincere hearts believe the gospel. Therefore, we ask God to grant us true repentance and the gift of the Holy Spirit that those things may please God, which we do on this holy day, and that the rest of our life hereafter may be pure and holy, so that at the last we may come to God's eternal joy. God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. Almighty and ever-living God, you hate nothing you have made. You forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Create in us new and honest hearts so that, truly repenting of our sins, we may receive from you, the God of all mercy, full pardon and forgiveness, 
God, in your mercy, receive our prayer. We ask this all through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah, the 50th chapter. Shout the message, do not hold back. Say to my people Israel, you have sinned, you have turned against the Lord. Day after day, you worship him and seem eager to learn his teachings. You act like a nation that wants to do right by obeying his laws. You ask him about justice and say you enjoy worshiping the Lord. You wonder why the Lord pays no attention when you go without eating and act humble. But on those same days that you give up eating, you think only of yourselves and you abuse your workers. You even get angry and ready to fight. No wonder God will not answer your prayers. Do you think the Lord wants you to give up eating and to act as humble as a bent over bush or to dress in sackcloth and sit in ashes? Is this really what the Lord wants on a day of worship? I will tell you what it truly means to worship the Lord. Remove the chains of prisoners who are chained unjustly. Free those who are abused. Share your food with everyone who is hungry. Share your home with the poor and homeless. Give clothes to those in need. Do not turn away your relatives. Then your light will shine like the dawning sun and you will quickly be healed. Your honesty will protect you as you advance and the glory of the Lord will defend you from behind. When you beg the Lord for help, he will answer, here I am. Do not mistreat others or falsely accuse them or say something cruel. Give your food to the hungry and care for the homeless. Then your light will shine in the dark. Your darkest hour will be like the noonday sun. The Lord will always guide you and provide good things to eat when you are in the desert. He will make you healthy. You will be like a garden that has plenty of water or like a stream that never runs dry. 
you will rebuild those houses left in ruins for years. You will be known as a builder and repairer of city walls and streets. The 51st Psalm. You are kind, O God. Please have pity on me. You are always merciful. Please wipe away my sins. Wash me clean from all of my sin and guilt. I know about my sins, and I cannot forget my terrible guilt. You are really the one I have sinned against. I have disobeyed you, and I have done wrong. So it is right and fair for you to correct and punish me. I have sinned and done wrong since the day I was born. But you want complete honesty. So teach me true wisdom. Wash me with hyssop until I am clean and whiter than snow. Let me be happy and joyful. You crushed my bones. Now let them celebrate. Turn your eyes from my sin and cover my guilt. Create pure thoughts in me and make me faithful again. Do not chase me away from you or take your Holy Spirit away from me. Make me as happy as you did when you saved me. Make me want to obey. I will teach sinners your law, and they will return to you. Keep me from any deadly sin. Only you can save me. Then I will shout and sing about your power to save. Help me to speak, and I will praise you, Lord. Offerings and sacrifices are not what you want. The way to please you is to feel deep sorrow in our hearts. This is the kind of sacrifice that you will not refuse. And the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the sixth chapter, Jesus said, Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them, for then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing so that your alms may be done in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fa fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. William R. White is a Lutheran pastor in Wisconsin. White is regarded as one of the greatest storytellers of the modern church. White not only does an excellent job of composing spiritual stories based on his own life and ministry, White also digs through the storytelling traditions of other cultures to find fables with messages relevant to us today. 
one of the most poignant of White's stories that I have read, is based upon an old Irish folk tale called The Church Lady. This simple short story, I believe, can speak to each one of us this Ash Wednesday, 2021. Thus, please allow me to share with you this Ash Wednesday, the tale of the church lady. Once upon a time, there lived an old lady who was known throughout her village for being extremely pious and holy. The church lady never missed a worship service. She not only made sure to attend worship each and every Sunday morning, she also went to every single festival and holy day service held on other days of the week throughout the church year. One day, another woman from the village asked the church lady, just how many times a year do you go to church? I would have to imagine that in any given year, you must go at least 100 or more times. Well, that question started the wheels of the church lady's mind running. Therefore, she decided to begin to keep track. The church lady built a wooden coin chest, put a lock on it, and hid the one and only key where she was sure that no one could find it. Each time the church lady would come home from worship, she would reward herself by dropping one gold coin into the slot on the top of the chest. Well, as the years passed by, the church lady began to imagine the coin chest was probably getting far too heavy for her to lift. Thus, the church lady asked the local blacksmith, the strongest man in town, to carry the chest outside into the light of day so that she could examine all of its contents. Be careful, said the church lady to the blacksmith. That chest is very heavy now. I would not want you to hurt yourself on my account. The blacksmith came in, picked up the chest and carried it out the door. Effortlessly, the blacksmith said, this chest is not heavy. You really do not need me to carry it for you at all. Just try and lift it yourself. You'll have no problem whatsoever. Speechless, the church lady quickly ran to get the key to the chest from its secret hiding place. Opening the chest, she dropped down to her knees and gasped eerily. Looking inside the chest, after years of depositing a coin as a reward for each time she went to church, the church lady was amazed to find only five gold coins inside. Only five gold coins. The church lady was left puzzled and confused. After a few days had passed, the church lady calmed down enough to head to the parsonage and tell her pastor what had happened. It just is not possible that anyone could have stolen the coins out of my box. It was locked and secured and the key was hidden where no one could possibly have found it. The wise and kindly old pastor looked at the church lady keenly and then he spoke to her in a gentle voice. I'm afraid that the message of your coin chest is that when you attend worship, Jesus was not first and foremost in your mind. When you attended worship, the welfare of those around you, others for whom Jesus died, was not central to your prayers. Unfortunately, it seems that most of the time that you spent in Jesus' house was actually time that you spent thinking about how pious and holy you are and how much everyone should follow your example of devotion to the church. The message of the chest to you is simple. 
It is a sign from heaven that in all of these years, only five times have you really come to worship Jesus and to thank Jesus for the free gift of salvation. I'm afraid, my dear lady, that true worship does not consist merely in the number of times that one enters a building. That old Irish folktale relates so closely to Jesus' words to us in the gospel according to St. Matthew this Ash Wednesday. Listen again to those words from our gospel reading. Beware of practicing your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets so that they may be praised by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be given in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door and pray to your father who is in secret and your father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites for they disfigure their faces so to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust consume and where thieves break in and steal but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust consumes and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. That statement by Jesus really forms the heart of our focus this Lent here at St. Matthew's. Where have we put our hearts? What is our treasure? How are we placing our hopes for salvation in our own goodness, in our own feeble efforts? Or this Lent, are we returning once again to the Lord our God, returning once again to the Lord our God, who alone can save us by the power of the cross and the empty tomb. People of God, may we each claim nothing but Jesus and the power of Jesus' blood shed for us as we prepare to come before God in penitence this Lent. Amen. In this season of repentance and reconciliation, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. O oh, furious cleanser of the temple, you came to your own, and your own received you not. Yet your word has promised us that all who do receive you, who believe in your name, are given power to become children of God. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. Cleanse our hearts, we pray you, merciful Jesus, of all unbelief. 
by your innocent suffering and death, forgive us our betrayal, our ignorance, and our neglect of your holy will. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. Tune our ears to hear your voice over the tumult that rages around us, that we may cling to you in firm faith and show our love for you in acts of charity toward those in need. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. Send your Holy Spirit into our hearts to make our bodies God's holy temples, purified and sanctified for worthy service. Receive our prayer, O God. Your mercy is great. Hear our prayers, merciful God. By your Holy Spirit, transform our lives to declare your praise and to make known your grace in Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us all to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O oh, compassionate God, your beloved Son welcomed sinners and ate with them. We give you thanks for the forgiveness and grace we have received from you. Make us signs of your love, that all the world may know your mercy and blessing. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you all, now and forever. Amen. Abide with me, fast falls the eventide. The darkness deepens, Lord, with me abide. When other Sweet.